Hi guys, this is Mohammed Al Karakuli from iTech Pro. Last time we learned how to configure Microtik with OSPF routing protocol, and we learned how we can redistribute the connected networks. And today we will talk about how to enable the MPLS in our network. First of all, what is MPLS? MPLS stand off multi protocols label switching. And the MPLS works between the layer 2 and layer 3 in OSI networking model. And the MPLS using LTP to form the neighbor with the other routers in the network. There is a lot of benefits by enabling the MPLS in our network. I'm not going to talk about all of them, but I will mention that we can provide some good services to customers by enabling MPLS in our network, like layer 2 VPN over MPLS and layer 3 VPN over MPLS or what we call it VRF. And also we can do traffic engineering. Now I am going to show you how to enable the MPLS on my Microtic router by using the command line interface as we used to do before. And also, I will show you the configuration by using the Winbox at the end of this video. First of all, I will check if we have the full connectivity in our networks. I already enabled the OSPF routing protocol in the network. I'll do IP route print. As you see, guys, we have a full connectivity to the all routers. I can see all the loopback addresses for the whole network. And as you see guys in this diagram, we have three routers work as a core routers. And if the routers doesn't have any relation to the customers, we call this router as a provider. And if the router have a connection to the customers, we call this router as a provider edge. I'll start enabling the MPLS in our networks on router 1 or provider 1 by using the command line interface by doing MPLS LDP I will give the loopback address as LSR ID and the transport address is the same thing the loopback address and I will add the interfaces ether1 and ether2 to the LDP by using the command MPLS LDP interfaces add interface ether1 and ether2 as you see guys, we done with MPLS configuration on router 1. I'll do the same thing on router 2 or provider 2. Now we done with provider 2, I'll do the same configuration on provider 3. Now we done with provider 3. I'll do the same configuration on provider edge 1. 
by using the same command mpls ldp Now I am done with Provider Edge 1. I'll do the same configuration on Provider Edge 2. And I will add the interface Ether1 to the LDP. Now I am done with the configuration and enabling the MPLS on the whole network. Let's check our configuration. I'll check first on provider1 by using the MPLS LDP neighbor print. As you see guys, we don't have any neighbor in our table. That's because the LDP is disabled by default. So we need to do one more step to enable the LDP by using MPLS LDP set enable yes I'll do the same thing on all routers Now I'll check our configuration and see if we have MPLS or LDP neighbors. As you see guys, now provider one have two neighbors, one with provider two and the other one with provider three. Let's check provider two. As you see guys, provider 2 have three LDP neighbors. One with the provider 1 and the other one with provider 3 and the last one with provider edge 1. Let's check provider 3. As you see guys, provider 3 also have three LDP neighbors. One with the provider 1 the other one with the provider 2 and the last one with provider edge 2 and as I said I'll show you the configuration by using the winbox as you see guys this is the LDP interfaces we added to the provider 1 and the LDP setting it's enabled and the LSR ID is the loopback address transport is the loopback address also and the LDP neighbor we have two LDP neighbors at this point we done for today see you soon thank you so much